to two groups in this country, patriots and traitors. No middle ground. Disinformation is not simply lies or falsifications. It is the art of having your enemies say what you want them to say. Who would engage in espionage on Twitter? Who would be that stupid? Not me. It's very important to educate people about these techniques. They have the Great Reset, we have the Great Awakening. Another type of active measure is the agent of influence. And why shouldn't I root for Russia, because, which I am? You know, it's very hard for journalists to accept that this has been going on. What do you get your opinions from, TV? This information is actually a deliberately distorted or manipulated information that is uh, leaked into the communication system of the opponent with the expectation that it would be accepted as genuine information and uh, influence either the decision-making process, for example, or to influence or manipulate public opinion. I want to see these people go through misery because of their grooming against our children. Some questions remain unanswered. What is the effect of all these active measures? I did nothing wrong. Welcome to the Did Nothing Wrong podcast, where we cut through the noise and help you make sense of the chaotic information space around us. I'm Griff Somke. And I'm Jay McKenzie. We're joined today by Daniel Schwartz. He is a far-right researcher and host of the podcast Public Research with Daniel Schwartz. We're going to be talking a bit about Nick Fuentes going on the Fresh and Fit podcast recently to have a purported debate. Daniel, welcome to the show. And, well, at first glance, this match doesn't make much sense. It doesn't. I mean, that's part of the reason I sort of I've quibbled sort of with the description of Fuentes as white nationalist, not because it's not true. The way I describe Fuentes is his life goal is to lead pogroms against Jews. Hard to argue that. But he's okay having a few brown faces in the mob. I was really reminded of that famous photo from the Nation of Islam rally with George Lincoln Rockwell and his lieutenants sitting in the front row with their arms crossed. That's really what that podcast reminded me of watching it. Kind of like, we don't agree on everything, but we agree on one thing, and that that's somebody needs to do something about the Jews. That's definitely the vibe I got out of Nick on that. Yeah, yeah. And we look at the Fresh and Fit podcast, and its name tells you what it is, right? It's supposed to be about health and fitness, and it's it's a couple guys named Walter Weeks and Myron Gaines. And you listen to the description of the show, and it's, we're the number one men's self-improvement podcast in the world. We provide the truth to men on females, finances, and fitness. And yet, here they are with this incredibly anti-Semitic Holocaust denier named Nick Fuentes, and they're letting him have this debate. And the t- even in the title of the show, they admit that they're talking about the Jewish question. You pointed out <laughs> that they actually tweeted about it. They're proud of the fact that they're talking about the Jewish question. And they're even a little mad that Joe Rogan isn't doing this himself. And I guess first we should explain what the Jewish question is and why it's a problem. But we also want to talk about how do these worlds converge like this? Let's actually define the Jewish question so there's no ambiguity here. So the idea of the Jewish question starts with the premise that the Jews are a problem for society. And the Jewish question comes down to how do we handle that problem? The idea of what do we do with the Jews? That's literally what people are asking when they ask that question. What do we do with the Jews? And the responses have ranged anything from put them all on their own island somewhere to, you know, the Hitler solution. So when they talk about the Jewish question on this show, they're literally saying the Jews are a societal cancer. What do we do to get rid of the Jews? That's what they're saying. What do we do to make the Jews not a problem for society anymore? So that's about the most anti-Semitic thing I can think of off the top of my head in terms of what you could possibly say to get that idea out there. And the idea that they're just laughing, that this is just funny for them. It's just repulsive. Should we or should we not have a debate about whether we should genocide an entire group of people? That's the question. 
<laughs> yeah, let's let's have a debate about that. Really, really, you want to you want to debate whether we need another Holocaust? Right. I think any any sane person, you go up to them and explain it in those those terms. Hey, you want to go talk to this guy? He thinks we should murder every Jew. Do you want to go have a debate with him? How do you debate that? How do you debate insanity? How do you debate an entire group's right to exist? I think the story that leads to this really starts when Fuentes gets banned from YouTube. What was that? Twenty eighteen. I think so. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. And he goes on to found cozy.tv. And it's basically his little Nazi ghetto. Like, if you go on it now, it'll be like a show with like 200 viewers. And then Ethan Ralph, the kill stream, will have like 100 viewers. And it's fairly small. And, you know, it's sort of like bit shoot. It's like, I'm okay with that existing because it's like a cesspool sort of separated. Yeah. <laughs> and only like, you know, true freaks go there. You really have to go looking to find it. <sighs> right. But actually, it's interesting. So, which big YouTuber would reach out and bring Fuentes back on the platform, which is what he desperately wants? He wants to get out of the Nazi ghetto of his streaming site. And lo and behold, the YouTuber it was is this so-called uh, liberal, Destiny. Oh. His name's Stephen Bunnell the <laughs> Third. Yeah. He's from Nebraska, and on his face, he seems like a reasonable guy, you know. And his whole argument for why he's made hundreds of videos with Fuentes, which has earned him money in in multiple ways, which I can get into, but he says. I, I'm de-radicalizing people. So I'm going to do a video with Nick Fuentes and we're going to debate JFK or and I'm going to serve him a meal and we're going to get chicken waffles and we're going to talk and laugh. But I'm going to win over his Nazi audience. Uh, that's what he says. But he's literally made hundreds of videos with Fuentes. I just want to point this out. While he was doing this, a YouTuber named Vegan Games, and also another, I believe his name is Rosie Wrist. I made a video about this. Asked Destiny, is Nick Fuentes anti-Semitic? This is a guy who says, I love Hitler. We love Hitler, yeah. He's epic. That's direct quote from Nick Fuentes. And Destiny, it's one of the most bizarre things I've ever seen. He says, I'm not sure. He says, to quote, I think we're going to need a lot of deep meta-analysis. Do you believe that? Do you believe that Nick Fuentes is, is anti-Semitic? I don't know, but I haven't like thought about it a ton. I'm not sure. It's okay. There's a lot of different. The thing is, is that there's a lot of different factors at play that make it hard to know 100. percent One mm -hmm. is he is very edgy and engages in a lot of edgy humor. I'm very edgy and I engage in a lot of edgy humor. Um, okay. But it's just the problem is that like for us to wade into these waters. We're going to have to start to do a ton of analysis, a ton of like sophisticated irony and meta irony analysis. Um, we're going to have to make sure that our sources are relevant enough that they're recent because I don't know about stuff four or five years ago. No offense to Nick or take offense. I don't care about Shady Samuel who's 19 or 20. He's 24 now. His beliefs might have changed quite a bit. And the political climate pre and post Charlottesville has changed. It's just so much work. I, don't, I just don't care that much. <laughs> You know, I'm going to need some really deep meta-analysis before I can decide if the guy who loves Hitler is anti-Semitic. <laughs> yeah, make sure you subscribe, though. Yeah. Uh -huh. Subscribe, smash that like button. And then what's worse, I think I'm the only one that's sort of written about this, and I finally posted the clip, is Destiny lets slip in one of these videos he does with Fuentes, which is interesting because Fuentes does little blood libel. So uh -huh. Jews kill Gentile children for the blood for mods and stuff. And Destiny just says, yeah, okay, let's move on. First call I had with Nico, he said, what's the mo what's the craziest conspiracy you believe in? I said, uh, read Blood Passover by Ariel Toph, which is about how Jews would uh, harvest Christian blood in the Middle Ages. Like, that, that was off the rip. He's like, what do you think about race? I'm like, well, I think the races have different IQs. And he's like, oh, come on, Nick. This is a video with almost a million views. If I'm like a 13-year-old and I'm watching that, and it's like Nick Fuentes is like, look at this book, and they killed the children, and then Destiny just sits there and says, oh, okay, let's talk about what am I supposed to believe? So, yeah. But uh, he, he let slip in that interview that he was booking interviews for Fuentes. Huh. 
he says, oh, you know, I set you up with that person for that debate and how big that would be for you. And Nick Fuentes says, yeah, that's true. And so what was that interview it was this interview he did on the show called No Jumper. Oh, right. And a lot of these shows and people were going to be talking about to uh, like people over a certain age are, is very obscure. But these channels are very large. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fresh and fizz. 1.15 million. I looked this up today. That's their subscriber number on YouTube right now. And No Jumper is this big show, and it, I think it mainly focuses on, like, hip-hop and mm -hmm. even, like, porn stars and stuff like this. And I watched that interview, and the host of that show, Adam22, says all this anti-Semitic stuff, and it's it's no challenge. It's not a debate. Just just to be clear, yeah, No Jumper, 4.61 million subscribers. <sighs> yeah, so this is not this is not a small platform we're talking about. And these people just brought on Richard Spencer as well, not that long ago. So really, if you didn't know that they weren't, you know, for lack of a better term, a white nationalist podcast, one would really have to wonder if that's what we're doing here. What happens is Destiny connects with Fuentes. They start making all these videos. And then the way Destiny works is he has these people called orbiters or stuff. But he, he, he brings on these other content creators as sort of characters. And on his show, he introduces Fuentes to this uh, streamer who's this anti-Semitic idiot named Sneeko. Right. The thing about this story is a lot of these guys are just really stupid, like amazingly <laughs> yeah. He yeah. introduces Fuentes to Sneeko. Fuentes radicalizes the Sneeko streamer. But he, Destiny literally is like connecting uh, Fuentes with all these large YouTubers who, who all share, all except for one, I think, all live in this small area in Florida. So you've got You've got fr the Fresh and Fit podcast. You've got Destiny, who like, lives in the same sort of neighborhood. And then there's a streamer called Zerka, who's another anti-Semitic idiot. You have this anti-feminist girl named Just Pearly Things. Who oh, right, right. Things. I've been watching her. She's, yeah. She's part of that scene. And there are others. But so basically, we have this, like network in florida and it's destiny who is not anti-semitic he's not racist i mean there's a lot of questionable things about him but it's basically him and all these like i love kanye uh -huh. anti-semitic <laughs> guys and he's friends with them he hangs out with sneakers well i gotta ask this question in theory destiny is not anti-semitic but it sounds like this guy is making a lot of money for platforming anti-Semites. So I really got to ask the question, can you really call yourself not anti-Semitic if a good chunk of your income comes from anti-Semitism? Right. And let me just talk about money. Destiny just signed a contract. I don't know if you've heard about this. No, no, I haven't. With this new streaming site called Kick. Have you heard about this? I've seen something. Yeah, I've seen them arguing about it. I'm not, I'm not sure on the details. There's like a betting company called Stake, which they're trying to promote crypto gambling. So they've started <laughs> their own stream strike called Kick. And now they're going out and giving these huge contracts okay. to these big streamers like Aiden Ross, this French Canadian kid named XQC. <laughs> <laughs> but these are massive uh, streamers, but Destiny just signed a, a deal with them. So while... He might argue that a lot of these videos with Fuentes on YouTube were demonetized, perhaps. This is still mm -hmm. his content mill, you know? He's making money off, off of it multiple ways, yeah. Right. Well, if you look at Destiny, and this is the thing that is that is troubling, that is problematic, you even look at his, his Wikipedia page, and it barely... There's one mention of Nick Fuentes. There's, there's mention of a indefinite ban on twitch and then they say that there's speculation that this may have been due to the fact that he streamed with with nick fuentes but then destiny says well it may have been related to him saying that trans women shouldn't compete with cis women and women's athletics so it leaves it even that leaves it open-ended and it's and it mentions one stream that they did whereas as you're saying there's hundreds but this is a guy who 
whatever he actually believes, he expresses pretty normy liberal opinions. He supported Joe Biden. He supported John Ossoff and Raphael Warnock in their Senate runoff campaigns. He sounds like a pretty run of the mill liberal who supports all the the regular causes. He's not labeled as a conspiracy theorist. You're not going to immediately be taken to this page about all the awful things that he's done or said because he argues the other position. But <laughs> most people have probably heard about him because he's made a living debating Nick Fuentes and giving him content. Nick Fuentes needs someone to argue with him. He needs someone to show up. And it was basically, I think, the worst defeat that Destiny has ever suffered. Even though I wasn't prepared and even though it was a spur of the moment thing. And this is the one debate I think you could say, really, it's a one debate where there was a moderator. It's the one debate where the moderator was even maybe more fair to Destiny than to me. And he got thoroughly humiliated. The outcome of the debate doesn't really matter because both sides come away with it saying they won. Mm -hmm. And they both have clips to quote unquote prove it. And it helps them grow their audience and get bigger and all these things. And if you want to radicalize some, some pretty normy kids who just maybe are dipping their toe into politics and yeah, Joe, Joe Biden's okay. And maybe I, maybe liberals have it right. And I, I, I want to be a Democrat and then, Oh, well, here's Nick Fuentes with these ideas about Jews and Suddenly, he reaches an audience that would never otherwise even see him. Oh, yeah. Destiny is a very big streamer. And that's why I'm so grateful for you guys for covering this, because he seems to, to have just gotten a pass. It's like, because he's not on CNN, he's not like a serious figure that needs to be scrutinized. And one of the worst parts about him is, you know, there's was that German quote, if you have one Nazi at a table... Mm sitting with 10 people you have 11 nazis there except for destiny all these other people are openly anti-semitic but myron games who is one of the hosts of fresh and fit i found this clip of him ranting about it i mean it's it's funny he's like and who controls the banks and who controls the alcohol companies and he keeps going it's like huh I'm pretty sure the Coors family is not Jewish. But no, no, <laughs> most definitely not. <laughs> these are Destiny's friends. I mean, well, the man's playing a cash register sound every time the JQ gets mentioned on his show. Well, yeah, it's this is not so funny. the yeah. starter kit for these guys. This is obviously something they've thought about. Yeah, hey, well, can I just mention Destiny is married to a Swedish model named uh, Melenia Goranson. She does streams with Sneeko, and I, I watch clips. She's like, you know, laughing and saying, "I really want to host a, I really want to host a game show with Nick Fuentes. Huh? It'd be a lot of fun. It'd be like, hey, can we get the Nazi to have sex?" And it's so, at the very least, to Destiny and his wife, they're totally fine being close friends with overt anti-Semites, and they think it's fun. It's it's good content. It's just fun. Yeah. 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 And one of the things that drives me the most crazy with Destiny, you know, the quote unquote liberal, I'd watch these conversations he'd have with Fuentes and they'd be joking and laughing and stuff. And, you know, there's a lot of debates and good arguments about platforming. But at the very least, if you are going to platform someone like him, you should be totally well researched. And you should be not joking around. Not He literally is serving Fuentes fancy meals. He has his wife come in dressed up in this outfit and bend over and offer him food and they giggle and laugh. If I was on something with Fuentes, I would say, you know that clip of you where you have that shit eating grin on your face and you say, the Jews better be nice to people like me or things could get pretty bad for them you know it tends to go from zero to 60 i'd watch out when it comes to the jews here's the silver lining it tends to go from zero to 60 like they're not wrong about that but there's a reason for that and the reason is them okay when it comes to the jews every society where shit has gone down with these people it always goes from zero to 60 and never starts with 
burning all the Talmuds in Paris, okay? It never starts that way. <laughs> but frequently, it seems to end that way, and it gets there very rapidly. Doesn't start there, but it frequently ends there. But I would say that the Jews had better start being nice to people like us, because what comes out of this is going to be a lot uglier and a lot worse for them than anything that's being said on this show or has been said on this show. In spite of the fact that I have been bullied by the Jews and I have been oppressed and slandered and lied about and attacked by the Jews, I have been completely precise for the most part and even-handed and nuanced about my view about the situation. And I'm also a Christian which is going to matter. You know, I'm threatening pogroms, violence. Yeah. Why don't you confront him on that? Never does. Why don't you confront? I mean, he does hundreds of videos with this Myron Games guy. Are you ever going to confront him on his overt anti-Semitism? No, never. To talk about Fresh and Fit, this episode, they're using uh, cash register sounds for when they say Jews. The Myron Games gets dressed as a Hasidic Jew and... Everybody's laughing as they deny the Holocaust. And then I mean, the, and the most obscene part is just seeing these probably befuddled Instagram models just sitting there. But it's so fun and funny. It, he doesn't confront him on stuff like this. And, and they do these stupid debates. He basically just sanitizes right. him. So I got to ask, and I think that part of the reason for this is that people who might be of a different generation don't take guys like destiny entirely seriously they think oh this is some youtuber this is i mean who's on youtube they don't realize just how many people are actually watching this and being influenced by it i mean i'm in my mid-40s you'll see people my age that have no idea who a guy like mr beast is they like the guy's one of the biggest stars on the planet they don't know who he is so they hear about these guys and they're like, oh, that's some YouTube guy. But the guy's got 5 million people following him on YouTube. And the people that follow him really follow him. This is stuff they all watch. And I can't figure out for the life of me beyond the just ignorance that this might be a phenomenon, why people haven't kind of outright called this guy out and called him on the carpet and made him just account for the things that he's doing here because one thing we've seen in the last few years is that deplatforming works. If it was not a big deal, then why is Fuentes so thirsty for his Twitter account back? Why does Fuentes care as much as he does about his Twitter account? Yeah. Uh-huh. Sorry, Nick. <laughs> you could say maybe not arguing with us online would be a good start, but he is talking. <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll send you the archive of that. It's pretty funny. <laughs> so basically the guy is thirsty for that exposure. He wants to be back on YouTube. He doesn't want to be on Cozy or Rumble. He wants to be on the big channel. The same way he wants to be on Twitter. He doesn't want to be on his Telegram channel. He doesn't want to be on Gab. He knows that's a limited audience. And here's guys like Destiny just backdooring that. They're sneaking him in, basically. Yeah, and this is why I'm so grateful to you guys for covering us because they're writing all these puff pieces about destiny and oh he's this the youtuber de-radicalizing people who is he de-radicalized names <laughs> destiny says and this is so funny he says well yeah i was doing hundreds of videos on youtube on my huge youtube channel with fuentes but you know when i was working with him or when we were chatting <laughs> He, he really stepped away from all that Nazi stuff. Uh-huh. Right. I'm like, I'm literally recording Fuentes on Twitter space, talking about how epic Hitler was uh -huh. while he's making videos with Destiny. We had an entire episode entitled Nick Fuentes' Permanent Record, where it was just a matter of like when to stop the tape for finding vile stuff that Nick Fuentes said. There's a lot of things that didn't make that episode because like, you just can't put a strong enough content warning on it to really cover yourself here. You cannot separate anything else Nick Fuentes does from the anti-Semitism. It is so central to mm -hmm. who he is. Yes. And you're just platforming the shit out of this guy. If you've done hundreds of videos with him and he can't be on YouTube, wouldn't it make more sense to like not mention his name? More people are going to hear about this guy 
as a result of your platforming of this dude, then you're going to de-radicalize like ever. Again, I want to thank you guys for reporting on this. I mean, because <laughs> this is important. I, I think people don't understand the damage Fuentes has done to that Gen Z generation. I think if people knew how extreme that Gen Z right is compared to like the millennial right, they would be much more alarmed. Like the way the way I explain this is this. Take a Richard Spencer speech from 2011, 2012, okay? Word search the word Jew. You probably won't find it, actually. Or even Holocaust, you won't find it. Or Hitler. He could almost fool you. And then watch Nick Fuentes 10 years later. And it's just, mm -hmm. it's so much more extreme. Fuentes uses this phrase, total Aryan victory. You might have seen this. All I want is revenge against my enemies and a total Aryan victory. All I want is revenge and an Aryan victory for my people. And I don't think anybody's written about this, but you know the order, the neo-Nazis, the oh, bank robbers? Oh, yes, I do. So yeah. uh, what was his name? Matthews. Bob Matthews. Bob Matthews. Mm -hmm. So I looked up Bob Matthews on BitChute, of course. <laughs> of course. Uh. And so I looked up Bob Matthews, and there's a speech Bob Matthews gave before he had this. Right. Yeah. We had David Nywert on the show. David Nywert right. used to get all caps letters from Bob Matthews when he was the editor of a small newspaper in uh, Sandpoint, Idaho. So he's been covering that forever. We He talked a bunch of Bob Matthews. He says, total Aryan victory. Thank you, Mike. My brothers, my sisters, from the mist-shrouded, forested valleys and mountains of the Pacific Northwest, I bring you a message of solidarity, a call to action, and a demand for adherence to duty as members of the vanguard of an Aryan resurgence and ultimately total Aryan victory. And I mean, that's what he's quoting. And I was thinking if I wrote a book about these people, it'd be called Killers in Waiting. Because if you look at their private telegram groups, what are they talking about? I, like 25% of the time, it's just, when are we going to kill? Who mm -hmm. are we going to kill? How are we going to kill them? Mm -hmm. This is a violent ideology. So this is not just some, oh, yeah, he's a little controversial. Yeah, that's not fun. And they always try to sell it with, I'm just joking. It's just a joke, bro. It's just a joke. And after a while, it like desensitizes these people to the very idea of you're talking about incredibly violent, incredibly racist, incredibly anti-Semitic stuff here. But you keep constantly saying, well, it's a joke, bro. It's a joke. It's a joke. And that's deliberate. I, uh -huh. Fuentes has literally said that. Oh, we have a quote of Fuentes saying that deliberately. This is how I get people. This is how I get them to, you know, think this is okay. I'm kidding, yeah. except I'm totally not. Or maybe I am. Who knows? What is required is somebody who is tactical with their language. Tactical, okay? Use irony because, you know, when it comes to something like Holocaust revision, I mean, this is a subject that you cannot deviate from the popular consensus on. But you also you also can't like I, I also think you really can't tell the truth if you adhere to that. So it's sort of like getting in the middle. It's being provocative. It's being I, I can't explain this in a very explicit way. You're going to have to just sort of uh, get what I'm saying here. When it comes to a lot of these issues, you need a little bit of maneuverability that irony gives you. Oh, well. You know, what does that mean? Well, I was being ironic. Well, I was joking. Well, it's whatever. Well, you don't understand the tone. Well, you don't understand humor. And that's true. And it is true to a great extent. You know, if you sat me down, uh, you know, with a fucking lie detector and asked me to go through all my views completely earnestly and sincerely, I'd probably come across a lot more moderate than you would imagine. But irony is a very important, like, linguistic and rhetorical weapon so that we can be subversive. And that is what they don't understand. We are dissidents. And as dissidents, they want to crush our ideas, our modes of communication, our organizing, our networking. That is why we must subvert those rules. 
We must be tactical. I use sardonic humor to convey a point subversively. I have never, you know, well, I do actually literally on my show say, just kidding, that's a joke, whatever. But the point is made, but the point is delivered. It's all a joke, brah. <laughs> it's very important to him to, to compare a uh, four-year-old Jewish girl being shoved into a gas chamber in Nazi Germany. You know, she's a, just a cookie. Yeah. Yeah. You know, right. How many cookies can you bake? And, and that is deliberate. Mm-hmm. Let me say, too, that I think you're exactly right about Gen Z and how radical they are. I think they are a very small part of that demographic and age group is actually on the right. It is it is a shrinking minority, but it is far more radical. And you have these guys who, yeah, they spend their time on Telegram and listening to Fuentes and doing these things. And they say these terrible, awful things. And... They have essentially canceled themselves or whatever you want to call it. They've they've said such hateful, horrible, anti-Semitic things that by age 20, they can't get a job in professional society. And maybe one day they could reform themselves and apologize enough and fix it. And I, I think I'd like to think most people are redeemable if they if they see the error of their ways and they try to do better that we can I don't I don't think people should just be thrown away and forgotten but a lot of these guys I feel like deliberately are pushed toward this absurdly radical viewpoint and then they have these quotes attached to them for the rest of their life and so what do they do when they feel like they can't go anywhere well they just they dig further they just dive straight into it they they become complete adherents loyal foot soldiers Mm -hmm. and and you're right where does that end at what point do they look at their life and and say it may as well be over and and then the threat of violence goes up a massive amount and and these it's like a ticking time bomb just waiting there the next step is your mauricio garcia in texas Exactly. I remember when the Buffalo shooting happened, just thinking about this is really a numbers game now. It's just a math equation. How large is that, you know, Fuentes or Gen Z Nazi contingent? What percent of that group is suicidal? And then what percent of that group is going to say, you know, I could shoot myself in the head, but yeah, let's go out with a bang. Let's go to the synagogue. Let's go to the black area of Buffalo and shoot up a supermarket. And so we are going to see this. It's it's a lot like jihadism. And mm-hmm. I'm not saying we need some police state or anything, but the similarities are, are really striking. One thing that's interesting and that I think we, we're seeing when we look at Fresh and Fit with Fuentes, and I don't know if this is deliberate. You know, Fuentes was at the Charlottesville rally mm-hmm. and his Groyper movement is like an adjustment. It's like, you know, we're not going to do it like they did at Charlottesville we're going to hide behind the flag and the cross. You know, this is about Jesus. Oh, why do I hate Jews? Because they all hate Jesus. And I don't know if it's deliberate, but they see, they're very into this idea of, okay, let's build a multicultural anti-Semitism. And I'm very curious to ask you guys, it seems like this far right came to a fork in the road. I don't know, maybe around 2016 or 17. One road was like race, racism focus or anti-Semitism focus. And of course, they're not mutually exclusive. But it seems like they've, they've been focusing a lot more on the anti-Semitism, mm-hmm. maybe because they just think, you know, we can get like some non-white people behind that. And that seems to be his project. Right? What do you guys think of that? I would say I think that's scary accurate because they've always been willing to make common cause the white nationalist, the white supremacist movement, the Nazi movement, even going back, like we said earlier to, you know, George Lincoln Rockwell have always been willing to make common cause with anybody who's anti-Semitic enough. They didn't necessarily have as much of an issue with the nation of Islam in the sixties as they did with the Jewish people. And they were willing to make a deal wherein we get together and we get rid of them and then we settle our differences afterwards. 
Maybe we keep the U.S., you go back to Africa, however you want to do this. But they have had no problems working with groups like that when it comes to dealing with the Jews, because for them, it's always about the Jews. For them, the Jews are the big enemy. They think, I think on some deep level, that they'd already be running the world if not for the Jews. They think, get the Jews out of the equation and we'll be on top. We have nothing to fear from anyone else but the sneaky, awful, conniving Jews. So that's why I think that they're willing to make those kinds of deals with people. And I think they think, you know, once the Jews are out of the way, then, you know, Mm -hmm. we can talk about segregation, you know. Yeah. We're just trying to get rid of conflict. And that's what's so perverse about watching some Black American content creators get in bed with Fuentes is, I don't think they understand this is not your friend, okay? It's, it, this, this isn't going to stop with the Jews, you know? No, you, you'd be next on the list mm-hmm. after he's done with the Jews. So I think there's a couple aspects for me. There's the content of it, right? You look at movements like QAnon, and they are so prone to this conspiratorial thinking. And Fuentes is absolutely not going to endorse or promote QAnon. Is he going to promote some of the same themes and and ideas that QAnon pushes? Absolutely. And kind of that could be a way to, to piggyback people onto the movement. And I think Fuentes needs people in that conspiratorial space to think that there's always a bigger plot on top of a bigger plot on top of a bigger plot. And when you start down that conspiratorial road, it always ends with the Jews. It always ends with the secret puppet master is the Jews. But I also think, in general, plenty of groups on the right will make common cause or even allow a Jew into the movement if they are the right kind of Jew, a a far right Jew who shares a lot of the same beliefs that they do. So what they're really talking about are the liberal Jews. And realistically, there aren't that many liberal Jews in this country. There are a lot more black people and Hispanic people that someone like Fuentes can, can take into his movement, that groups like the Proud Boys can take into their movement. They need numbers. They need people to get on board. And if this one small subsection of the populace isn't on their side, well, that's fine. And we can just go ahead and go blame them for everything. And that's what we're seeing here. Absolutely. So I did also want to touch on this with Destiny in particular, to go back to that, because I think it is a fair question about why is he getting a pass or why are influencers like this getting a pass? My theory would probably be a couple of things. It would be one, the New York times, the Washington post, they don't, they don't know who this guy is. They don't do YouTube. They're not up on this. They're not going to write on things. They don't understand. They'll probably get there in five or 10 years because that's, that's kind of what it takes sometimes in the mainstream media. But I also think there are smaller outlets and and less well-known reporters that absolutely understand this. They absolutely could write these stories and in some cases have. But if you're on an island out there, if you're an independent journalist and you write this, well, what's going to be called a hit piece on Destiny, who's this good liberal that likes Joe Biden and supports all these Democratic causes you are going to get so much hate thrown your way. So I think it's probably a mix of not being caught up on it and those who are, are afraid. Do you, am I missing anything there? Is that, do you, do you agree with that? I think your first point is definitely true. I mean, this is the sort of paradox, or I don't know if that's the right word about the, the streamers. Their fans are really young for a specific reason. So like Hassan Piker, who I think is like a positive influence, like a good example of a influencer or a streamer person. What does he stream for six hours a day, I guess? So like you have to be like a kid or unemployed to like watch all this. I mean, it takes so much time. You know, when you're a New York Times reporter, I mean, like I don't think you have like six hours a day to waste watching the, the, these guys, a lot of them are just idiots, like John Zerka and Sneeko do like four hour daily streams. They have hit upon a, a clever strategy. It seems like 
this is finally breaking through. Uh, but if you promote Fuentes on, I'll just be frank, like these very low brow shows, there's like a blind spot exactly in the media where they're not even seeing this. But I mean, if it was Rogan or Lex Friedman or like somebody, you know, CNN, they would pay attention. But it doesn't matter if, if it's just some streamer, even if the streamer has, you know, millions of views. Also, can I just bring up for the audience in case they don't know? OK, so what are these videos Destiny did with Fuentes like? I would say it, it wouldn't be dissimilar from saying like, OK, I host a NBC show in 1980. And I'm going to have a Klansman who's like given speeches, you know, endorsing lynching black people. And we're going to debate what's the best fast food restaurant. And I'm never going to bring up that he's given a speech, you know, calling for lynching people. I mean, he does not confront Fuentes on this stuff. And he lets him just pick these debates. Like, we're just going to do a JFK debate. And spoiler alert. It was the Jews that killed JFK. And we're going to do a 9-11 debate. And it's like, he just lets Fuentes frame everything. So basically what you're telling me is that this guy is the equivalent of Sean Hannity's old partner, a guy by the name of Alan Combs, who used to be sort of the designated liberal punching bag for Sean Hannity on the Fox network every night. He would, in theory, be this good liberal, but his job was to play punching bag so Sean Hannity could make whatever points Sean Hannity wanted to make. And Destiny just kind of sits there and waits for his turn. And and Fuentes shouts over him and he eventually just lets him have his way. He doesn't walk out. He doesn't say, ah, this is... He just sits there. And again, it's like, you know, it's a very complex debate about platforming. You know, there are good arguments on either side about can you do it a good way or is there no way to do it in a good way but at the very least if you're going to be making hundreds of videos with the holocaust scenario like you should probably like bone up on anti-semitism if you're this good liberal he has done so little research <clears throat> fuentes just says you know jews they killed little kids to get the blood from matzah you know that's just fact and blah 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 and destiny's just like well i don't really know about that so uh yeah yeah, not not sure if he's anti-Semitic. Destiny still needs to do a little more research. You got to do deep, deep meta analysis. To yeah. you know, what does he mean? Hitler's epic. We have an episode of our podcast that he could listen to that would answer the question for him pretty quickly if he wanted to be honest about it. If he wanted to find the answer at any point, but. It is difficult to make a man see something when his job depends on him not seeing something. He's made hundreds of videos with this this guy who hosts Fresh and Fit. This is this like overt anti stuff? He will never confront. You know, oh, what is, what is this rant you're doing about the Jews control the alcohol industry and stuff? It will never happen. Let me just say too, I watched the episode of Fresh and Fit where. As we're talking about here, Nick and Destiny, quote unquote, debated the Jewish question. So the hosts were moderating the back and forth between Nick and Destiny. But Nick Fuentes is honestly, I'm listening to him and the arguments that he's making. He's hitting all the all the tropes about oh, why we went into Iraq and that there was this document that four Zionist Jews made, which everything he says has an ounce of truth to it. Was there a document that was made at some point? I think so. Did these people who wrote it have any say over U.S. policy or what we do? No, there's no evidence of that. Like you could break these things down. But Nick is also, he's getting his dates wrong. He's mixing up the first Gulf War and the second Gulf War. He's mixing up when ISIS was founded and when we invaded Iraq. There's all these errors that he's making along the way. And you've got fresh and fit, these guys who don't appear to know anything about this. They don't seem to know what he's talking about. Yes, they're moderating it so the two of them are not shouting at each other, but they're not correcting Nick. They're not saying that's... That's not true, or you're confused, or you're wrong, mm-hmm. or we fact check that. They're not doing any of that. It is all surface. But if you're someone who normally listens to that show, 
And I'm sure the same thing is, happens with Destiny. If you're not read up on this stuff, you don't. If you don't know why Nick Fuentes in, is wrong, he manages to sound reasonable. He even manages to sound like he's winning the debate and making more sense than Destiny or whoever he's talking to. He isn't. He's hitting all of these tropes that are that are untrue that have been disproven he's talking about syria and oh no assad didn't gas his own people it was the white helmets which is just kremlin propaganda that has been repeated Mm -hmm. on and on and i could break all of this stuff down but they're not doing any of that and so it's getting into the mainstream with people who don't even know what he's talking about with moderators who don't know how to correct him but all, but also, why are you debating what he wants to debate? Like, why are you debating Iraq? Why don't you go to the point? The guy is a admirer of Adolf Hitler, who openly, like, with a shit eating grin, just talks about his fantasies of future pogroms against Jews. And says he wants to ban Jews from being able to be in, in the government and all sorts of. Just ignore that and let's like talk about the iraq war and so that's that's the first problem is that you shouldn't be ignoring all that and like okay yeah we disagree on like how you love hitler and are denying the holocaust but let's have a debate on like tax policy <laughs> that's just fundamentally wrong uh-huh. you know i should have written all this into an article but i was thinking about what would the title be if it was about destiny and i i, I was thinking this afternoon that the title would be meet the far right's favorite liberal destiny because literally he's now being flown out across the country to go on tim pool show with john doyle <laughs> who has held rallies uh with nick fuentes oh but but haven't you heard that tim pool is a is a moderate centrist it's just bullshit trump supporters hate him yeah trump supporters hate him tim pool oh yeah he just he voted for trump because I don't, it was protest vote or something. I don't, but all of these guys are doing it and they're getting away with it. It would be funny if it wasn't so fucking sad. Well, you have to laugh so you don't cry. Did you guys watch the whole Tim Pool Emma Beaglin thing? I saw the highlights of that. Yeah. <laughs> Did you see the part where Tim Pool it was probably the day after and he's like, listen, Sam Cedar and the Majority Port, they're like a comedy show. They're not a serious show like us. And then I like looked at the majority report for that day. It was like some interview with like a law professor about the history of reconstruction. And then meanwhile, Tim Pool is like, okay, top story of the day. Bud Light. What are we doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And his articles are from the Daily Mail, the Post Millennial, and his own supposed news site, whose editor in chief is the white nationalist conspiracy theorist, gateway pundit writer, Cassandra Fairbanks. And Tim Pool fooled me for a while. I'm, hey, I'm a sucker too. Like, I'm not, I don't see these things right away. But that show, and it made sense as soon as I found out about it, I think uh, Robert Silverman is that right. his name? Yeah. Yeah. Daily Beast uh-huh. has written some great stuff on Tim Pool. But when I heard Cassandra Fairbanks was running uh, the doing the booking on Tim Cast, I was like, oh, that's why all these people with links to Nick Fuentes and the Groypers have been like John Doyle, you know, who's defended Nick Fuentes' anti-Semitism. People like Elijah Schaefer, who literally mm-hmm. helped run one of Fuentes' pro-Hitler conferences. I was wondering why they keep getting invited. Oh, because she's running it. And she told me once on Twitter, she was a female griper. Mm-hmm. With AKA, modern day, you know, uh, American Nazi. I'm just curious with you guys, how often do you wonder, one of my biggest frustrations is I wish we had really good polling on the Gen Z right. Because the thing I think about all the time and really matters is how big is this Fuentes component of that generation? Well, we don't know because they're going to lie. If uh-huh. anybody asks them, they're going to lie. And we've heard very reliable reports that the numbers on Cozy are completely cooked, that there's no honesty at all to any of this. We've had plenty of people on that are quite credible that have said similar things, that it's almost incredibly hard to tell. He can get a crowd just about anywhere he goes to come out and protest if he's going to protest something. It's really hard to say, but it's not nothing. Well, I've heard, and it sort of keeps me up at night, that 
somebody said that half of the GOP sort of staffer level in Congress are Nick Fuentes fans. Nick himself has said it's a priority to get his people into those positions by next year. Check it out. And this is my mission. This is my mission statement. I'm announcing it early. My mission for 2024 is to raise an army of at least 1,000 Groypers that will infiltrate Capitol Hill and the Trump administration as staffers and bureaucrats. And it's our job to create an entire generation, a true movement, a cadre of 50,000 people to take over the government and create a lasting MAGA institutional revolution at every level of government. You've even got, well, he first said he was a speechwriter, and now he's just a member of Team DeSantis, uh, Nate Hotchman, who, uh, I mean, he's a young guy, he was 24, 25, and a few years ago when he's still in college, he's talking, talking up Nick Fuentes. And it is kind of a mark against him, but he still got hired by the DeSantis campaign, even when he was still the supposed front runner. Or Garrett Ziegler. For instance, I have a friend who was like, yeah, I think I'd vote for Trump next time over Biden. I was like, there's no way I could ever vote for Trump just on personnel alone. Like you realize, I told him, like, you realize there was a literal Nazi in the in the West Wing in his first administration, this kid named Garrett Ziegler, who was actually people who know their stuff will know this. He was the one who let Sidney Powell and uh, Michael Flynn and uh, Byrne into the Oval Office to pitch their coup before January 6th. He's a, he was a featured speaker at Nick Fuentes's pro, I call it pro-Hitler conference, mm -hmm. where Marjorie Taylor Greene uh, appeared. He was working within breathing distance of Trump. And if Trump gets elected again, I, I have no doubt there's going to be Groybers and Hitler fans. Well, yeah, they they will. They will. And you're going to have Nick Fuentes be the Gen Z version of, of Roger Stone for Donald Trump. Mm. Maybe they're not going to talk directly all that often, but are Trump's people going to talk to, to Fuentes' people? Are they going to have some communication? Are they going to coordinate some things? You better fucking believe it. Mm-hmm. And that's why I think it's so important to kind of go with a big tent approach going into 2024. There are obviously differences between what the people who are more in the center would like to have the place look like and what the people who are more on the left would like to have the place look like. But I think what we can all agree is that, for lack of a better way to put it, orange man, bad. Orange man, real fucking bad. And if we don't want to have an absolutely unhinged orange man with very little in the way of guardrails in a second term, then we would be well served to put away as many of the factional arguments as we can and focus on stopping this guy. Well, I mean, I think when the Trump people look at Cornell West, the idea of him being on the ballot in Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Ohio, they, they literally are salivating. Mm -hmm. Yep. These GOP donors, a lot of them aren't idiots. Like, they're willing to give Cornell West a oh, lot yeah. of money. Like, what I'm hoping for now is that they've seen this movie enough times that they know what the point of having a Jill Stein or a Cornell West on the ballot is. They know who that's supposed to help. And the Democrats are smart enough to not go for it this time around. The progressives are smart enough not to look at that and say, wow. We, we're really choosing the lesser of two evils here. No, no, you're, you're being played. But, but there's so much money in it. You've got RFK Jr. He's got some of the same donors and fundraisers as Ron DeSantis does. You've got no labels out there, which is really just a GOP operation, but they're going to run maybe a third party candidate like Kristen Cinema, <laughs> the centrist candidate. So you have another option as if all of this, all of these third party candidates, whatever election it is, it's going to help Trump. That is the entire point. And they will put ungodly sums of money in their campaign coffers to just get a tiny sliver of the vote. So I think most people know better. I do, but that's so much money. It's going to reach somebody. Yeah. Yeah, it absolutely is. And like you said, they're going to try. 
They're going to sink a lot of money into this project and they're going to sink a lot of money, not only into people like, you know, Cornell West or, you know, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. They're going to sink a lot of money into people like Destiny and Tim Pool and various other people who can credibly centrist or credibly liberal, but they're pushing people in the wrong direction. And let's let's be real about this, too, with Nick Fuentes. He supported Trump. He right now says, oh, he's, he's a little bit, hmm, I'm a little disillusioned with Trump. I'm not sure. But he still talks about, oh, well, Trump did do this. And I do like the, this thing that Trump did. And, oh, we just need to get back to Trump prime, you know, the original Trump, the 2016 Trump. So, look, Nick Fuentes always has to act cool and alpha and, and above it. He was with Kanye because Kanye was the, speaking the most truth. But when it gets close to the election, when it gets to the time when people have to decide, you better believe that Fuentes is going to tell his groipers to go out there and vote for Trump. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 100 percent. You know, you brought up Kanye. I just want to say. I think that was a really important event that happened. And I think it's sort of being memory hold, you know, it was like six, seven months ago. I was like, oh yeah, that crazy thing happened. I would really (laughs) encourage people to go back and look at people, look at the right, look at those Twitter feeds, right? When he was talking about, I love Hitler. And really that, those are the times you really want to be paying attention because it really revealed a lot. For instance, take a figure like Lauren Chen. You know her? Right. Uh, Okay, she was at The Blaze with Liza Schaefer. And uh, she came out during that, and there were lots of people who were saying, you know, I'm not going to just say I love Hitler too, but hey, maybe we should talk to Nick Fuentes. And she was saying all this stuff like that. And all these other figures, I think it was very revealing. Also, the reaction to the Pedro Gonzalez leak. Right. Uh, and that was also very re- revealing. And who's defending that? Well, it's it's the the outrage can only go so far. And they're counting on people just kind of shutting their brains off to it and say, ah, well, it's just cancel culture again. Ah, the the liberals are just finding an excuse to to unperson this guy. No, Pedro Gonzalez is is a Nazi. He can claim that, oh, this is ancient history. It was a few years ago. The things that he says in public are not much less extreme. It was pretty clear. Yeah. Can I just ask you guys, I think people need to be paying more attention to the new YouTube CEO. I I think this was something that happened and it didn't get enough press. But I think this is very important. YouTube had lots of problems. But at least they owned up to it. Okay, Susan Wojcicki, she like saw there was a problem. There's that New York Times piece and they did some stuff like that recommendation algorithm. Really, they stopped promoting like, hey, here's some flat earth. You know, here's a David Dick video. They stopped doing that. I think with tech, what's been revealed with this Elon Musk buying Twitter and stuff is that, you know, there was that stereotype. Oh, Silicon Valley, they're all left wing Democrats. Uh, we we found no, out that no. is definitely at least the owners. No, that is not the case. <laughs> and this is a story that really hasn't been covered. Peter Thiel has been getting terrible press for years. Okay, this guy Mark Andreessen, who I think might even be richer, is like one of the richest people on earth. This like legendary VC founded right. Netscape, and he's part of that sort of Elon Musk, Peter Thiel elite dark web. I do have some familiarity with this, but they uh, they were the only funders. Andreessen and Teal were funding Curtis Yarvin yep. before anyone knew who that guy was. They, oh, they yeah. kept him running for a few years. I still can't figure out what that guy's about. There's like, there's some of these figures over there. I I've heard about them for years. And I still like a Bronze Age pervert. I've heard about this guy for years. I still have no clue. <sighs> Uh, we should, we're going to have to do an episode on that. It's, it's a whole, yeah, that's a whole mess. It, it's the toxic masculinity doesn't actually, it's, it's beyond that. It's crypto fash, toxic, weird, incestuous. It's a weird mix of shit that those guys are running. The intellectual dark web is its own, you know, and I use that intellectual in big air quotes, but holy shit, that is a whole thing. The reason I brought up the YouTube CEO is 
there was this interview with Zuckerberg and Lex Friedman. And it, what was telling is Zuckerberg was sort of like dabbling in this, you know, we censored too much COVID stuff. And the billionaires, they really admire Elon. Like, Oh, they love it. When mm-hmm. you look at Reddit right now, you know, and the, the terrible actions the CEO is, is taking and he's praised Elon. They think Elon has given them permission to show their worst selves and they're doing it. Mm -hmm. And the tech people have this bizarre victimhood complex, like these journalists living in a one room apartment just dominate me and I just have $10 billion (laughs) and it's so, they're so unfair to me. But what I'm sort of getting as I think with Trump gone, they're, the whole tech industry is sort of like, yeah, maybe we did censor too much. So this Fresh and Fit channel, I mean, you don't really get to 1.4 or 5 million views without YouTube basically saying, yeah, this is good. Let's you know boost it. Well, so I, I'm curious to see what happens to this whole sphere, because these are huge channels, just pearly things, fresh and fit, you know. We should also mention, I, I think that's all a great point, but part of the way that a podcast like Fresh and Fit is getting away with having Fuentes on is they're starting on YouTube, and this is something that Steven Crowder, I know he's doing too. They They start on YouTube, they pull people in on YouTube. Hey, here's the biggest platform it, let's let's get our numbers up let's get everyone on then let's switch everyone on to rumble where yeah. just about nearly anything goes short of death threats and calls for violence anything goes on rumble youtube isn't they have not taken any action on that and it's clear that people are doing this and and youtube is just letting it fly you know, it's funny. Why BitChute's not on the App Store? They built the app. They wanted to get it on there. They the Google and Apple didn't allow it. Uh, but Rumble gets a pass when they let their hosting Nick Fuentes, Red Ice TV. You know, o- open Nazis, open Holocaust denial, extreme stuff. And I think their CEO even said, I remember years ago he did an interview with Alan Dershowitz, was like, "We don't allow hate speech." <laughs> well, they allow anything. And they're on all the app stores. I guess I guess this is just if you have like these billionaire investors, Peter Thiel or David Sachs just calls Tim Cook and says, you know, we got to get this app on the app store or something. But I don't think tech, they're done doing stuff. I think they felt this pressure during Trump and now they're in much more of a... What are you going to do about it? Yeah, laissez-faire. Yeah. What, what are you going to do about it? What if, if we don't take action, if we all collectively... Just don't do anything. Okay, fine. Write your hit pieces. Well, we tell everyone that the media is fake and don't believe them and only listen to us and we're the real truth. And they've they've very de- intentionally, deliberately boosted this movement where they're they're also always, oh, they're being canceled just because they, they have conservative beliefs. Because mm-hmm. I have different opinions. Yeah. Oh, I just I just want small government and all that as if that's real. Like you want Republicans. Because they let you say whatever the fuck you want and they tax you less. Mm-hmm. That's that's it. It's more power and more money and you want both. And they're going to give it to you. Bingo. Well, thanks for coming on because having people like you on who get the scope of what's going on with this is definitely going to help get people's awareness up of what exactly we're dealing with here. It, it is. And I, I feel like this is one of those that's going to age really well. And if we go back and listen to it in five years, we're like, damn, a lot of that came true. I, and it's again, I laugh so that I don't cry. But yeah, we warned you here first. Yeah. Wish we weren't feeling so confident about that prediction. But here we are. But again, thank you, guys. You know, journalism or is so tough these days. I mean, people don't become journalists for the money. People don't do what you're doing for the money. You guys are doing a real, I would say this about like knowledge fight and all. So many great journalists from Stephen Monticelli in Dallas and Molly Conger in Charlottesville. There's just such a great community of people modernists. And, and there really are my heroes, like people who are not getting paid to monitor the most sickening, repulsive people. This is really 
thank you so much for what you guys are doing. Well, we're doing what we can. You know. Thank you. There's a lot of good work being done out there. And if everybody does that, the world's going to be a better place. Thank you for what you do as well. Yeah. Thanks for, for being knowledgeable. And thank you for all the clips and for being ready to talk about this stuff and to to put it in in terms that people can understand and, and digest because it is, it's a lot to take in, but it's good that we can talk about it because I, I think we, we all watch this space. We know what's happening here. We know not enough people are talking about it. And this is how we begin the dialogue and make sure that other people start talking about it and raise awareness. You, you got to start somewhere. And I think this is a good start. Definitely. Yes. All right. Thank you guys. All right. All right. Thank you very much, Daniel. You have a great night. Thanks for listening to the did nothing wrong podcast. If you want to hear more, you can find us on the web at did nothing wrong Please make sure you subscribe to get our content straight into your inbox. You can also follow us on Twitter at James, the word for, and the letter M, all one word, and Grizza BJJ, G-R-Z-A-B-J-J, as well as DNW Pod. We're extremely grateful for paid subscriptions and donations that allow us to keep doing this important work. Thanks, and remember, everyone mentioned did nothing wrong.